Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, including a full workout with Brittany and I, so go check that out if you guys want to see that, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And uh, I had something that was brought to my attention by a, a prep coach that I know who coaches both tested and untested bodybuilders and physique competitors who just said, hey, what do you think of this transformation with Martin Birkin gaining at least five kilos of uh, lean muscle mass in the last few years? So let me put on my plus five head of weaponsmithing, work on skill up my crafting a bit, and let's talk about this. Because, you know, Martin's one of those figures that I have talked about, like, generally in a positive light. I don't always agree with everything he says, but I think he's been an interesting, influential figure in the online fitness world. Um, and I think he's brought more positive than negative, and that isn't something that can be said for everybody out there. Uh, that's a relatively rare thing in this community, just my personal opinion. That's all that is. So I generally like Martin. Uh, and it's not even his intermittent fasting that I like about Martin. I, I could really give two shits about the intermittent fasting thing. I think intermittent fasting has potential positives and I think it has potential negatives. Um, is what it is. Uh, I think his fuck around itis article that he wrote was probably one of the single most significant online fitness articles ever written. Uh, so because of that, that article alone has always kept Martin in a pretty high status in my opinion. Irrespective of what I disagree with him on, that article was pivotal. Um, you can't take that away from him. No one can. So people are saying, and I've had a lot of people ask me, do you think Martin Burkham's on gear? And usually the answer when you look at his old stuff when he was like 85 kilos, you always go, maybe it's possible. It's possible. A lot of people who are really into gear uh, oftentimes would say, um, I don't know, maybe he's, he's probably using some clint or something. That's what a lot of people have said. But they're like, his size is obtainable natty. Plus his strength to weight ratios are so high that implies, that implies he may have built that mass clean. And the reason for that, the amount of weight that he lifts and the leverages and the, the muscle fiber recruitment that he generates with the insane lifting loads that he does would probably make him grow faster on gear. That's kind of a, the counter argument that was always made. It was always made, right? And, and that's a fair assessment. It's hard to not get really big when you, you rep out over 600 pounds on a raw deadlift without straps or a belt, right? Anyone who's repping over 600 on the deadlift, if they go on gear, uh, they usually blow up. It's really hard not to get massive on drugs, even moderate amounts, uh, unless you're starving yourself. Uh, when you're lifting the sort of weights he lifts, same thing. Look at his, how much weight the guy can do from dead hang weighted chin-ups. All right? You throw some uh, exogenous test into the mix and a little growth hormone, and guys who pull that sort of weight on dead hang chin-ups tend to get enormous biceps. It's kind of hard for them not to grow. So that's always been a good argument because the guy obviously is, is decently genetically gifted. The guy's a bottle. Um, so he's already got a good structure. His bone structure, frame, everything else. Guy's a Swedish fitness model. Um, we're probably not at the bottom of the bucket in terms of overall genetics for muscle mass aesthetics. I mean, let's be fair here, guys. Let's be reasonable. Probably not scraping the bottom of the, the genetic bucket there. So that being said, uh, that was always the argument made in the past. However, he's gotten bigger. Uh, and here's where we need to go with that. <laughs> I'm going to give my assessment in a minute. But, you know, before anyone jumps in and thinks I'm saying negative stuff, quite frankly, um, I found his little recent transformation on a couple different levels to be actually beneficial to me, actually inspirational to me now that I've looked at it, because here I am cutting, saying, hey, guys, I started at 250, I'm now at 229. I'm going to drop to 200. I look at what he's done. Uh, the guy wasn't really fat. Look, by anyone's standards, at 105 kilos, he was fat by his standards, but he's a model. Right? The guy's a model. He doesn't have the same standards normal people do. He's a fitness model. His, his livelihood depends on this. Uh, when your livelihood depends on this, to be at a healthy athletic body fat, to call yourself fat, wouldn't be fat to anybody else, but in his, what he does for a living it is. So you need context there, but he felt he was too fat. He was unhappy with it. Guy drops to 90 kilos from 105 kilos. So that's 231, I believe that 231. 
down to 198 pounds. All right, that's 33 pounds of fat loss. 33 pounds of fat loss. At the end of his cut, he is strong as hell. Guy can still rep 300 kilos. 300 kilos on the deadlift. For those not aware, uh, that's about 660 pounds. Um, and that's without a belt. That's without a belt. That's without straps. <laughs> like, are you serious, dude? Are you serious? Like, I finished my cut down to 198. I'm going to rep out 660 on the deadlift and fuck straps and belt. Like, okay. Um, most of you feel a little inadequate at that point. Probably should. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> what the fuck? Because he's got videos of it up and it's like, really, dude? Wow. That's some, that's some beast mode shit. People used to turn like beast mode all the time until you go see that and be like, this dude just ripped down to under 200 pounds. And he's ripping out 300 kilos on the deadlift without a belt or straps. Holy shit. So, I mean, at the end of the day, what well, you've got to admit, Martin's got fantastic genetics. He's got a fantastic work ethic. The guy is mind-bogglingly strong by anybody's standards. I don't care. We're not talking by non-powerlifting. We're talking by powerlifting standards. Uh, you go to a powerlifting meet and ask, hey, is a guy repping out over 600 pounds without a belt who weighs less than 200 pretty good by powerlifting standards? Everyone would be like, yeah, that, that's definitely in the ultra elite category. Yeah, that's easily in the top 1% of power lifters. He's not really even a power lifter. He just likes being strong. So, there's where we're at with Martin. Uh, as far as his transformation goes, look at pictures of him standing next to other people. Guy's getting monstrous. You look at him by himself and you go, okay, he's definitely big and ripped even at 90 kilos. And you see him next to other people. And you go, holy shit, this guy's only 90. This guy's only 198? And that's kind of the, the characteristic. Before, Martin was stringy looking when he was ripped. He was stringy, but strong as hell. Because a lot of people did kind of like, well, he's aesthetic, but he kind of has a cockroach look to his face. I've heard people say that. That was what they would say. He looked like a cockroach. He looked stringy. Now he looks thick and full. Five kilos of muscle gain for an advanced lifter. Probably not doable ever uh, drug-free. Uh, not even if you train for it for five years. Again, you're talking about, what, about 11 pounds of solid ass muscle gain. Granted, there's bulking and cutting involved, so it's not like he blew up lean, just gained it with no fat because he bulked hard uh, and then cut over 30 pounds. Uh, is that likely to be doable for someone who's been training several years already? Someone who's built a base already. Again, we're talking base. Guy can deadlift. When you can deadlift 600 pounds already, I think you've built a base. I mean, we're going to agree. When you can do dead hang chin-ups, I don't know, with anything over 150 pounds hanging around your waist for reps, I'm going to say you've already built a, a base, right? You're, you're done with your new gains at that point. You're done base building. Uh, you, you're into the advanced lifter stage at that point. Uh, again, I don't think anyone can reasonably argue against that. Advanced lifters gaining another 11 pounds of muscle forever at any point through their lifting career, solid ass muscle. Without drugs, uh, pretty unlikely. Pretty unlikely. And that's not intended as an insult. I know Martin's always marketed himself as natty. That's the way he portrays himself. And he very well may have been natty through most of his career. It's actually possible. I mean, again, people say, I don't know, but it's actually possible, guys. It actually is. Uh, all things considered. And mainly because he trained so damn heavy that his size and muscle mass is it's like, okay, that could actually be done uh, drug-free with the kind of weights he moves, with the sort of tonnage that he moves, with the sort of uh, mechanical tension he subjects his muscles to. Yeah, I mean, because he wasn't outside of the bounds of the natural limit. Guys, I think over six foot tall slightly or right in that range, 85 kilos, uh, we're talking about being in the 180s. Being 185 pounds ripped when you're six foot or taller and you train for serious strength, um, that's on the, the high end genetic wise. That's relatively rare from a genetic perspective, but people are out there. The top 10% of people, they really bust their ass. They could do that. Yeah, totally doable. Um, but to then gain another 11 pounds of muscle after that, rip down lean, and still be brutally strong. 
Uh, if you were to ask my opinion, did he join the dark side at that point? Probably so. And that's not an insult because here's the thing, I don't blame him. I don't blame him for it. That's not a moral judgment. That's not saying, oh, Martin, you're a bad person for doing that. Oh, not of you. You know what? Most guys in the industry go on gear. Okay, That's the norm. Most guys who claim natural in this industry are on gear. The vast, overwhelming majority. Uh, by that, I mean 90% or more. It's normal. Uh, and if a person feels that they can take their career or their outreach or whatever to the next level doing so, um, they're going to do it. And I'm not going to hold that against them. I'm not going to hold it against them until it becomes a con artist problem if they're really conning people. And then I'm going to say, hey, come on. But the difference is, is that Martin has always advised training protocols that actually will work for drug-free people. Uh, so that's kind of the point. Uh, a lot of his lean gain stuff, the stuff that he's always put out, actually will make a natty relatively big. A, natty, a natty's going to get pretty big if they follow what he's telling them to do. Uh, it's not like goof all fuck around itis training. So when you look at it from that perspective, do I think he checked in his natty card at this point? Yeah, I, I do. Is it a negative judgment where I think he's a bad person or something? No, no. Uh, I just think Martin has brought more positive than negative to this industry. And so even the things I disagree with him on, I'm not going to make a big deal about. Because uh, I don't really think he's one of the bad guys in the industry at the end of the day. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.